rotations and building team chemistry. And ready and underway, the tip of our Sonic blockbuster matchup. Here at Neville Arena, Auburn and White controlling the opening tip. This is Trey Donaldson, who has been starting at the point in recent weeks for the Tigers. Kentucky going man-to-man. -man. They want to put pressure on the ball and try to be the aggressor, and they force a turnover on the first play. The Tigers are saying the ball was deflected out of bounds off a Kentucky player. Well, that uh, evidently was not the case. It'll belong to the Wildcats. A look at our degree starting lineups beginning with Kentucky and no Trey Mitchell in this game for the Wildcats. Suffered a shoulder injury, came out of their last game. Adu Fierro starts in his place. Without Trey Mitchell, he's the connector of this Kentucky team. And I think the most indispensable player. He's their leading rebounder, leading offensive rebounder. That's a big loss for the Wildcats. A nice baseline cut, and Justin Edwards gets Kentucky on the board. You're going to see Auburn try to trap ball screens. They're going to blitz them. How will Kentucky handle it? On the first possession, Kentucky handled the pressure, wound up getting a dunk from the corner by Edwards. Donaldson for Chris Moore, who hardly ever looks for his own offense. The senior from West Memphis, Arkansas. He misses the three, and that's not the guy you can leave open if you're Auburn. They catch a break as Antonio Reeves can't knock it down. You always have to find Antonio Reeves, Reed Shepard, and Rob Dillingham in transition. Those are the three guys that you cannot leave and must find immediately. Janai Broom, one of the best big men in the country. And what about it with Ugana Anienso coming off a 10-block game? But Broom spins to his strong side, lays it in with the left. Anienso played up and down there, didn't have a strong low base. And just a simple drop step to the basket. In the backdoor cut, Edwards can't get open. The arrow finds on Yenso. They need him for defense. They'll take any offense he can give them. Well, Janai Broom was just parked in the middle of the lane, and when on Yenso caught the ball right underneath the foul line, Broom didn't really put any pressure on him. Just dared him to shoot it, and he made it. Kentucky had a good defensive effort. You did the game midweek against Ole Miss, 175 to 63. And Auburn to beat South Carolina by 40 here during the week, 101 to 61. These are two terrific offensive teams. The difference is Auburn is also a terrific defensive team. They're the only team in the country in the top 10 in both offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency per Ken Palm. DJ Wagner frees himself, can't hit the three. They're going to be trying to force T.J. Wagner to his right. Even though he's right-handed, he's much better going to his left. And you might be able to see at the bottom of your screen, Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard both getting ready to check in. They often come in together three to four minutes into the game. Shot clock at seven. This is Denver Jones, left hand, no good. Moore, the rebound, kicks it back out, and it stays with Auburn. What does Kentucky lose not having Trey Mitchell available to play in this game? Well, I mentioned I think he's their their indispensable player. He's he talks on defense. He keeps everyone connected. He's mature out there. He's their leading rebounder. He's scoring over 12 points per game. Their best offensive rebounder, and he's also a very good help defender. Bruce Pearl has gone to his bench as well. Chad Baker Mazzara, a junior from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, has come an extremely deep Auburn team. 10 or 11 will play in every game. Turnaround jumper no by Jones. Kentucky doing a pretty good job thus far in making Auburn take the shot Kentucky wants him to take. And a good start for Justin Edwards, his second field goal of the game. Anytime you have two on the ball, you can't send more than one shot blocker to the play because that opens up the offensive glass for Kentucky. Jones just keeps on going, and Reed Shepard picked his pocket from behind. The best at getting steals, I think, in the SEC, maybe the best in the country. Averages two and a half steals per game. 
He just goes after the ball, stays on the floor, and goes after it to take it from him. He's not trying to knock it away. He's trying to take it. And a foul going against Auburn. Trey Donaldson called for the foul in the nation the last three years. Right now with this Kentucky lineup, Auburn wants to be concerned primarily with Reed Shepard and with Rob Dillingham. Dillingham lays it in, and Kentucky's lead is six. And it's not easy to score on Auburn from out of bounds on the side or out of bounds underneath. They put a big guy on the ball, make it difficult for you to see in. They guard for five seconds, all five guys. Baker Mazzara, no, and a terrific rebound by Fierro. He gets wrapped up by Cheney Johnson. They get a little physical with one another. It'll be a held ball, Kentucky ball. Let's check in with Jess. So Cal is fired up, guys. He said, this is why I told you we felt really good about tonight. I knew you were going to fight. Three stops in a row. I am loving the defense. And is it all about the defense for Kentucky? Because everybody knows the offense is poked. Yeah, they don't have to work on their offense. They need to get better defensively. And this team can do that. They have the personnel to do it. It's going to be a challenge without Trey Mitchell available tonight. This team has the ability to be a much better defensive team than it has shown. And can you imagine if they get better defensively and in rebounding, that just fuels the already potent transition game that Kentucky has. One of the best transition teams in the country. They score over 20 points per game in transition. A.D. Johnson in off the bench. Sometimes Bruce Pearl goes for the whole line change, can change five guys at a time. Dylan Cardwell, who has checked in as well, couldn't handle the pass. And Auburn out of sync at the offensive end. Give Kentucky credit for that. Their defense has been good to start this game. And the ball pressure has been good. They're staying between their man and the basket and so far have been communicating pretty well. Fierro, boy, Onyenso was wide open in the paint, and Fierro didn't see him. He had a dunk if they'd gotten him the ball. Well, Cheney Johnson did a good job of pressuring the ball and taking away vision. That's the only reason Onyenso didn't get that dunk you're talking about. Boy, these are two fiery coaches, aren't they? They've both been at it a long, long time. Dillingham can't turn the corner. Good job by Cardwell. Fierro puts it on the deck. Onienzo down with a rebound. Dillingham rises up for a three, and it's 11-2 Kentucky. Rob Dillingham is a baller. And when he makes them early and sees a big basket, he can fill it up in a hurry. Only played 18 and 20 minutes the last two games. A wide open three won't go down for Cheney Johnson. And Auburn's got one field goal in six minutes. Dillingham off the glass, no, and the whistle blows, and a foul will send him to the line. Had that right hand drive and kept it in his right hand the whole time, just got clipped with the body as he was going up. No question, got bumped by KD Johnson. And then right over Dylan Cardwell, good, put good pressure on Rob Dillingham, but he doesn't need much space, he gets it off quickly. And a dynamic athlete. Jalen Williams back in for Cheney Johnson. Rob Dillingham projected in every mock draft that I've seen to be a lottery pick. He is an electrifying talent. Tremendous speed. Shoots the ball very well. Missed both free throws. Auburn needs to get Jalen Williams going. The lefty. He's averaging 19 points per game at home in SEC play and shooting over 70% from the field. And they look to go into him right away. And is this another area where you feel the loss of Mitchell? Not that the arrow can't stay with Williams, but Mitchell just maybe a little bit better of a matchup for Kentucky against a guy like Jalen. No question. Uh, he's just a calming influence out on the floor. Excellent passer is a big guy. He can play pick and pop. He can play pick and roll. Handles the ball well. The arrow to the bench, Jordan Burks has checked in. And a three for Chad baker Mazzara, And that'll get the fans going again. And also, when the ball goes through the basket, it makes Kentucky play half-court. And that's what Auburn wants to do, make Kentucky into a half-court team, not a full-court team. 
Reeves puts it on the deck, gets to the bucket, blocked by Baker Mazzara. Behind the back, and then behind the back, one time too many. Reeves, they've got numbers, and a foul by KD Johnson that'll be his second, but he didn't have much of a choice. Chad Baker Mazzara started his career at Duquesne, went to San Diego State, then junior college, just left wide open on out of bounds underneath. Good job by Jalen Williams to ball fake. And that's just way too easy, giving up a wide open look in a special situation. And Reeves at the line. Johnson will sit, or will he? Well, he stays in the game, but that was the second on him. But they're so deep, they're almost immune to foul trouble because Bruce Pearl's got so many guys, he doesn't have to worry about anybody getting in foul trouble as much as most other coaches. Well, very few teams play 10 guys. The amount of minutes that Bruce Pearl plays that 10. I mean, 10 guys, 14 or more minutes per game. That's really remarkable. Cardwell back to Holloway. Holloway had been starting. Bruce Pearl flip flop he and Donaldson from bench to starter a few weeks ago. What a great move underneath by Dylan Cardwell. And if you're looking at the great backup centers in the nation, this guy's got to be on the list. They got a great combination with him and Janai Brewer. Well, Dylan Cardwell is an elite post defender, and he's a lob threat, a rebounder, and a big time shot blocker. A great matchup. Dillingham trying to get by Johnson. Wagner had it stuffed. Dillingham will try again, and it's Auburn ball. Well, how about that vertical contest at the rim? Holloway blocked from behind by Bradshaw. Williams cleans it up. That's what Auburn wants to do, Dan. They want to create chaotic situations where they operate. Baker Mazzara. And Holloway runs it down, puts it up. Cardwell the rebound. Williams for three. Frenetic action here at Auburn. Wagner off the glass and good to quiet him down just a bit. Boy, what a tough move by D.J. Wagner. That's two behind-the-back passes that Chad baker Mazzara has thrown. And neither one has worked out particularly well for Auburn. Had an advantage situation, got nothing out of it, and gave up a bucket on the other end. Johnson almost lost it. Now he did. They can't show the ball like that. And Reeves in transition with a three. The lead grows for the Wildcats. In order for Auburn to try to keep Kentucky out of transition, Auburn's offense has to help their defense. And that's when their offense put their defense in a really bad spot. KD Johnson, the outlive game, that annual game here that uh, they put on at Auburn to raise awareness of cancer prevention and detection. It's something that Bruce Pearl started back when he was at Tennessee. Chris Lofton, a cancer survivor. It carried over here to Auburn. They just changed the O to an A since it's Auburn, but it's pronounced outlive, and it's all about outliving this dreaded disease. We'll tell you more about it, but right now, He's not very happy with the way his team is playing. Well, he can't be happy with the turnovers. That while they've forced a couple, they've given up the ball way too many times. Kentucky leading in points off turnovers in this game, 12 to nothing. Five Auburn turnovers have led to 12 Kentucky points. Trey Donaldson just picked up the foul. That's his second, so he and Katie Johnson each have two. Got a big Monday doubleheader coming your way here on ESPN. It starts at 7 Eastern. Virginia is at Virginia Tech. That, you want to talk about environments. When Virginia goes to Blacksburg, that is something else. And then Kansas State and Texas at 9 Eastern. Monday night on ESPN and also on the app. Great popcorn at Castle Coliseum, yes. by the way. And you, you are a real popcorn and ice cream aficionado. Ice cream for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm no Mike Young when it comes to popcorn. Mike Young eats popcorn before every game, sometimes yeah. on the bench while he's watching the teams warm up. That's a coach after my heart there. I think it's part of his recruiting pitch. It could be. <laughs>
It's got to be in his contract. Broom is fouled from behind by Edwards. Good screening action to get Janai Broom down on the right block. I think the more Janai Broom touches the ball in the painted area, the better offense that Auburn is going to run. And then Jalen Williams has to get going. What a couple of years here at Auburn for Broom. Two years at Moorhead State, now in his second year with the Tigers. And he is without question an all-SEC performer. On Yenso, they're going to count the basket and say that was goaltending. And Joe Lindsay, one of the officials, is saying to the Kentucky bench, this is the new rule this year, we will look at it at the next media timeout. So for now, the basket counts, but at the under-eight timeout, they'll have a look at it. Well, from our angle, it was definitely on the way up. The question was, if it, if, hey, if it hit the backboard, and I don't think it did. But if that was just, hey, it, was it on the way up or down? That was on the way up. That looked like a good block to me. The Auburn's got to get more pressure on Kentucky. There's not enough pressure on the ball. Which is not something you say very often about Auburn. They always apply defensive pressure. Well, they're building a wall, but... Tough shot there by Wagner and a good defensive stand there by the Tigers. And away from the ball, we got a foul down low going against Kentucky. I didn't see the foul, but I saw Jalen Williams wind up way out of bounds. Yeah, he got pushed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good block. There, there's no question about that. Once they review that, if, if they don't, that's on the way up because it was going toward the backboard. You were there Tuesday night at Rupp Arena. Onyenso tied a Rupp Arena record with 10 blocks in the game held by David Robinson. Onyenso is a big-time shot blocker. You know, he leads this team in blocks per game. He's not played every game for Kentucky, but he's been a game-changer of those blocks. Boy, Williams wide open off the inbounds. Baker Mazzara the rebound. Holloway will launch. He has been struggling. He's only shooting 26% in SEC play, only 22% from three. McDonald's All-American, a freshman, a miss by Edwards. Holloway can push the ball, that we know. Broom isolated on Onienzo. Good ball movement. Everybody gets a touch. But Holloway can't hit it. Broom the rebound. Up strong, and it won't go. Boom is a big time rebounder. Always goes after it with two hands and just so strong. He's immovable. Wagner guarded by Jones. Gets some help from Williams. Shot clock at 10. Reeves. And it's Auburn ball. Holloway in transition. Our bodies are flying. Chad Baker Mazzara down on the other end. And Joe Lindsay will cling on the part of an official to just call goaltending when it's close because they can review it. I'm not sure that's the right way to go about it. They need to relook at uh, revisit that rule in my in my view. All right, let me ask you this, Jay. Auburn scored 101 uh, Wednesday night against South Carolina. They've got nine in almost 12 minutes against Kentucky, which is not a gifted defensive team. What is going wrong at the offensive end for the Tigers? Now, Auburn is not running their offense with pace right now, so they're not putting a ton of pressure on the Kentucky defense, and they've been made largely to be a half-court team. But even in transition, Auburn's made some curious decisions. Uh, the two times that Chad Baker Mazar has gone behind his back in transition, uh, where they get nothing out of it. And the turnovers, the turnovers have put Auburn's defense in some bad spots. So cleaning up offensive execution, I think, is number one uh, for Auburn. We're at the line. They'd love to get Broom going, love to get Williams going. they got all kinds of guys who can score. They average 83 points per game, and they're top 10 of the nation in offensive efficiency, but they haven't looked like it tonight. And when the ball's not going through the basket, Dan, that does take a little steam out of your defense. It's tough to pitch shutout after shutout. Good help by Broom. Shepard finds Dillingham. Got a good defender on him. Got Jones in the air. Tried to bank it home, but he missed. Now that is an up-and-under move. <laughs> you should do like a...
a tutorial, a YouTube video on what is and isn't an up and under. Basketball 101. And highlight shows, they say up and under when a guy goes, you know, underneath the basket. And, uh, jackknives. That's not what an up and under move is. Broom, a nice look. Johnson passes it up. Jones will take it and hit it. Well, that's the kind of ball movement that Auburn wants to see. The ball goes into the post. It collapses the defense and a great pass by Janai Broom. They are top 10 of the nation in assist percentage as well, but an immediate answer at the other end for the Cats. Yeah, you say in the scouting report, stay in front. Stay in front of Reed Shepard. That's hard to do because Reed Shepard does a great job at changing speeds. And just like with a baseball pitcher, changing speeds is tough to deal with. Johnson, and it rolls off the rim to Onienso, who's playing big minutes again here for Kentucky. John, uh, John Calipari has tried all three guys at center at various points this season. Bradshaw and Ivisic, the other. But right now appears to be on Yenso's time to shine for Kentucky. Well, KD Johnson was wide open on that flex cut. <laughs> Don't you love big guys who run the floor? Janai Broom lays it in. That's what Auburn needs to do is off their defense, get out and transition, start putting some pressure on Kentucky. The Wildcats have gotten off to a great start in this one. They're confident. Dillingham turns the corner, too strong off the glass, but it's out of bounds to Kentucky. When Auburn gets the ball inside, that's when they're at their best. Janai Broom draws a couple defenders, everybody inside the lane, and a great skip pass to Katie Johnson, who gives it up to Denver Jones. That's really good offense, and Janai Broom just running the court. What a great catch and finish with a defender running right by him. And even with Auburn getting off to such a slow start, it's back to a two-possession game. Auburn's out of bounds under defense is terrific. The arrow muscles it up and in and draws the foul as well. The arrow is a driver and a right-hand driver. You have to sit on that right hand. But John Calipari wants him to drive it, get a piece of the paint so that he can create shots for others. He can kick it out to open three-point shooters, but there he just took it all the way to the basket. And Johnson fouls him with that left arm coming across him. You know, with all the talent Kentucky has, you hear so much about the freshmen, you hear about the veterans and Reeves and Mitchell. Thierro kind of slips through the cracks a little bit, but he's a really good player. Mitchell missed a game last week with a back issue, and Thierro had 15 points and three blocks in 32 minutes against Gonzaga. He could be a very valuable player for them. He's a really valuable player. He's back healthy now. Yeah. Remember he had 16 points and 13 rebounds against Kansas in the Champions Classic. His seven games with a back issue who came back a few weeks ago. It's just a, a questionable shot, questionable at best by KD Johnson, stepping back with a defender right in his grill. That's not the kind of offense that Bruce Pearl wants his team to run. But it feels like what Bruce Pearl wants now from KD Johnson, and he's not on a mischief, but he's been on Dillingham a lot tonight, and KD Johnson is a tenacious defender. Shepard gets by Moore, kicks it out. He had, a, he had a lane all yeah. the way to the basket for a layup. And they turn it over, only to give it back. It's Shepard again. Unbelievable. Reeves up top. Fierro and a foul. Unbelievable by Reed Shepard. He's like a, a free safety in football that reads the eyes of the passer. He just, and almost like Wayne Gretzky used to say, it's not where the uh, the puck is, it's where it's going to be. But that pass ahead is next level. That's what led to that lob pass, the terrific steal and pass ahead. And there's an extra step on that ladder for Adu Thierro. So Auburn made a little bit of a run, but Kentucky weathered the storm, and they've got it back out to a double-digit lead, up by 12 now. The arrow will get a breather, and Jordan Burks checks in. He doesn't play all that much, but with Mitchell out, Burks will get some time. And he's from Decatur, Alabama, about an hour and a half northwest of here. And he's got some family and friends in the house. And to steal a few extra minutes. Nice little fade screen by Janai Broom. Step back by Denver Jones. They needed it, but they don't get it. But it is still Auburn ball. Auburn cannot get anything to go. Even the good shots they're taking are rimming out. 
They are 6 for 23, 26%, with six turnovers as well through 15 minutes of basketball. It's been a disjointed first half offensively for Auburn. You give credit to Kentucky's defense. And here's Vladimir Ivisic, who was a, has been a sensation on a couple of occasions for Kentucky. He's also had some games where he hasn't played at all. And this is a physical game. He just got away with holding Broom right away. And then Broom went around him and scored. Well, that's going to be a challenge for Ivisic because Broom is significantly stronger. But Ivisic is a really skilled passer, shooter. And he can impact the game with his length around the basket. And he's having all kinds of problems with Broom. At both ends already. Dillingham pulls up. And here comes Donaldson for the Tigers. And Dillingham called for the reach-in foul. Trey Donaldson is so strong and compact. You're not going to knock him off his path. Football player in high school, too, right? A very good safety. And a really good football player. And being a, a defensive back, you can see it in his defense in basketball, the way he backpedals, the way he reads the eyes of the passer. Tomorrow on ABC, the number one ranked South Carolina women, the nation's only unbeaten Division I basketball team. They host Georgia at 1 Eastern, and the college game day crew tips off our coverage from Colonial Life Arena in Columbia at noon. And speaking of all kinds of excitement in women's basketball, how about what Caitlin Clark did? What she score, 49 in the game where she broke the record, hit one from the logo to do it, and now she's trying to chase down Pistol Pete. Well, she's had a remarkable career, and she's trying to chase down Lynette Woodard, too. I don't know why Lynette Woodard's name, the great player from Kansas, Olympian. I don't know why all her points. She scored over 3,600 points at Kansas. Dillingham hounded out on the perimeter, keeps the dribble alive. Little stutter step, the force, and the rebound to Donaldson. Another good stand by the Tigers. Really good defense by Denver Jones, staying in front. Donaldson. And Lior Berman, who's the 11th man on this team, getting some minutes. Yes, thank you, Chad baker Mazzara, Jay, back into the game after suffering that injury a few minutes ago. Well, that's good news. Cardwell. And it'll go! And we sat at practice yesterday and watched Auburn work on out-of-bounds underneath more than any team I've ever seen, but this is really a staple in the Bruce Pearl playbook, right? Well, Bruce, uh, Dylan Cartwell just sets a little screen for Chad baker Mazar. Two defenders go with him, and he just shapes up back to the ball. But what a terrific shot as he was going down. And Auburn needed that one. This last three minutes, 50 seconds of the first half is really important, not just for Auburn, but it's important for Kentucky not to give up this lead that they've worked so hard to get. The arrow giving Kentucky some really good minutes in this one. Won't get the shot off over Cardwell. Shepard off the glass and good. I read Shepard is such a good player, always under control. And when he gets an open look at the basket, the guy hardly ever misses. I mean, he's shooting 52% from three. It's ridiculous. And he gives you four rebounds, four assists, and two and a half steals per game as well. Other than that, what does he do, really? <laughs> Baker Mazar, a lot of dribbling. Good pass. Jones is open and hits. And that's where Kentucky can't fall asleep on the backside. And a foul at the other end. Cardwell does not agree. But look how quickly, even after a made basket, Kentucky gets it up the floor using the sideline. And Cardwell got a clean block up top. There was body contact. But is that offense initiated? You tell me. That looked offense initiated to me. And I know about 9,100 people who agree with you. That's a clean block. And the body contact was initiated by the offense because Cardwell was running with them and moving backwards, not into the offensive player, Antonio Reeves. 88% free throw shooter makes one of two. 
And Jones at the point now. And this is something that Bruce Pearl did a little bit in the game against South Carolina. And he wants more experience, more size against to defend some of these talented Kentucky guards. And now we got to call the other end going against Kentucky. They got Justin Edwards just giving a shot to Chad Baker Mazzara as he was going through the lane. Auburn was running a little horn set and it got disrupted, especially by that foul. You mentioned Baker Mazzara's path to Auburn from Duquesne to San Diego State to a junior college last year. Northwest Florida State College. Cheney Johnson played at a D2 school last year. Alabama Huntsville. Denver Jones comes from Florida International. Bruce Pearl wants players who are hungry and wants players who want to be at Auburn. And when he recruits players, he says, listen, you might not play as many minutes, but you're going to be on a winning team and you're going to love the guys you're playing with. And you'll be really productive in the minutes that you play. Yeah. Reeves baseline cut off somehow found Dillingham gets it back and hits it boy in a broken play Auburn did a good job running Antonio Reeves off the three-point line on the left side they ran Dillingham off the three-point line and then Dillingham finds Reeves in the right corner and Auburn talked about this at practice yesterday too Dillingham Shepard Reeves you've got three elite shooters out there at the same time right now for Kentucky with a couple of point blank opportunities for Janai Broom when Onyenso went for that block shot on Jalen Williams. That opens up the offensive glass. Dillingham with a full head of steam. It somehow goes, and the Kentucky lead is back to 10. But Dillingham is just wired to score. And there's some talking going on right now. I think some of the Auburn fans are really giving it to Dillingham, and he's not having any of it. They are right on top of you here at Neville Arena. Room. It's not a good shot. It's not that he can't make it, but that's off one pass without making the Kentucky defense even move. Dillingham gathers. Now he's got to get rid of it. They've still got plenty of time. And Katie Johnson called for foul number three. I don't know why he'd reach in there. I mean, he's got defenders behind him. He's got help. But he just reached in with that right arm. There's no question that was a foul. Now Johnson comes out. Holloway back in. And we said with 3.50 to go in the first half how important this time period was. And thus far, Kentucky has handled it very well. Yeah. And I think it was 7, the lead, I believe, at that point when you made that statement. It's up to 11 now. Auburn has not lost at home this season. Remember, we showed you earlier, 43-2 and two here the last three years. And away from the ball, a call against Kentucky. This one, I believe, going on Reeves. John Calipari, especially before the Ole Miss game, was talking to his team about being more physical. If you're not going to be physical, you're not going to play, was his statement to his team. And it was said over and over again. And thus far here on the Plains, at a really difficult place to play, Kentucky's been the aggressor, and they've been physical. Picked up a couple fouls. But I think overall, John Calipari likes the result. You and I have seen a lot of Kentucky this year. And on a number of occasions, John Calipari has talked to us about the need for his team to be more physical. He'll go back and watch the tape and say, that team just, they just punked us tonight. They just beat us up tonight. Well, he actually said to his team, like, think about what other teams are doing to you. And do it to them. Because the officials aren't going to call it. Do it to them. Inside a minute to go in the first half. Dillingham off a screen. Tough shot, and it goes. 
And Rob Dillingham is making some tough ones here at Auburn. Tough shots for others. Those aren't tough shots for Rob Dillingham. He's into double figures, the first player in double figures in this game. Holloway fouled on a three-point attempt. Aiden Holloway just came off that little brush screen up top. And Dillingham got caught up on it and just continued his momentum right into Aiden Holloway. And Holloway's been struggling. And we mentioned he's only shooting 26% from the floor. He just, just didn't let him land. Not a lot of contact, but you still have to let him land. So Holloway gets three. Had some big games earlier in the year. His debut against Baylor. That was first game of the year for Auburn. They played Baylor. Holloway had 19 at 24 early against Indiana. But as the shooting struggles persisted and got worse, then Bruce Pearl made the change. And now Trey Donaldson has been starting. Although the minutes haven't changed that much. It's kind of gone like from 17 to 23 to 23 and 17. That's the way it works at Auburn. Well, Aiden Holloway is a, is a small guard. He's their top three-point shooter as far as three-point field goals made. But he's been scouted. And SEC opponents know you take away his three and with his size, if you make him drive it and finish at the rim, it's going to cause him difficulty. He'll come out to get Jones in there on defense. Kentucky basically can hold for the last shot of the half. John Calipari will use the use it or lose it. Uh, they have met the challenge so far in the first 19 and a half minutes of this game. Well, I think it's a great confidence builder for Kentucky and these young players that John Calipari can look at and say, look, you can do this. You've got it in you. You've shown it and build from here. Two second difference game clock and shot clock. Just a little weave action to move the defense, and now they'll get into something. Dillingham wants on the end zone to set the ball screen. On the end zone gets it back, kicked it out, and they'll turn it over with 2.9 seconds to go. Good help by Jalen Williams in the middle as Onyenso was rolling to the basket. There was a blitz of that ball screen. Dillingham had to give it up. But without Williams coming over, that would have been an easy bucket. Lior Berman checks back in. Chris Moore sits for the Tigers. Baker Mazzara gets it off in time. Pretty good effort. But it will not just. We are ready for the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. And we'll see how Auburn gets it started with the first possession of the second half. D.J. Wagner on Trey Donaldson. Wagner does a really good job of putting pressure on the ball. Donaldson having to work really hard, and he's not getting much of anywhere right now. Backs up almost to half court. Jalen Williams only had a couple in the first half. He's got to get going. Moore working hard on the glass, but can't come up with it. I don't think there was a single pass on that possession, right? It was all Donaldson, and then put up a contested long two. Reeves the floater. And Onienzo runs down the loose ball. Going to work on Broom and somehow scored over him. Looked like he had his back to the basket when he did it. Well, when Onienzo got the ball, Broom had to go get him, not let Onienzo come to him. That put him right in the middle of the lane, and any good big guy's going to score. Another turnover. Wagner and Donaldson bumps him. And will they give him a couple of shots? Ball, you can knock the guy sideways, but you're right. He, he put his arm out, then brought it back and just lowered his shoulder. So DJ Wagner makes the first and uh, pretends to low five a couple of imaginary Wildcats in the lane. Well, I can't imagine the confidence that Kentucky is taking from this performance thus far in a really difficult place to play. And I thought the old Miss game at Rupp on Tuesday night was a huge step forward for this Kentucky team. John Calipari talked to his team about being the aggressor and being physical. And that's exactly what Kentucky's been in this game. They've got their largest lead of this one right now. And how about keeping a loud building quiet? Tipped and stolen. 
That's what Auburn does. They put a big guy on the ball, make it difficult to even get it in, let alone run a play to score. And speaking of football, out-of-bounds plays both ways, offensively and defensively, kind of like special teams for Auburn, and they're awfully good at them. Donaldson kicks it. Broom is wide open. Misses the three. Fierro soars for the rebound. Boy, they can't buy one. And a block is the call on Donaldson here. Let's take a look at out of bounds underneath. Janai Broom on the ball. That puts size against the guard. It's five guys playing their rear ends off for five seconds. And Kentucky interested just in getting the ball in. They've got to throw it long instead of getting the ball in to get a shot. Meanwhile, Jay, that is the fourth foul on Donaldson. What a tough start to the second half for him. He sits. Katie Johnson is in, which really moves Denver Jones to the point. And he's not really a point guard, but Bruce Pearl is searching for it in the backcourt right now. Wagner. And on the end, so just a lot bigger than Katie Johnson. But give Johnson credit for battling and keeping it alive. Now he's open. And Broom is fouled and will go to the line. Boy, what a great job by KD Johnson. Undersized going against Onyensu. Just kept the ball alive and knocked it to a teammate. Made sure that Onyensu didn't get it. And what a terrific pass in transition. You're not going to get a more wide open shot. Or is he going to claim pass? Is he gonna, <laughs> would he have gotten an assist for that? I wanted wanted Broom to make the shot just to see if a pass <laughs> would have been credited. Uh, third foul on Antonio Reeves, so he has to sit early in the second half. Reed Shepard comes in. And Auburn has to know where Reed Shepard is all the time on defense. He is roving around for steals. If you're aware of where he is, you can take advantage of it. You got to know where he is at all times on defense and offense with the shooting ability. Well, his shooting ability, yeah. but whether it's Dillingham, Reeves, or Shepard, you can't leave them. Boy, Kentucky fortunate to have the ball. Wagner driving left. Too strong off the glass. Here come the Tigers in transition. Great challenge by Janai Broom at the rim. Jones to Broom. And a foul. A short roll. It's a difficult pass to catch and a move to make, but Janai Broom does it very, very well. Just bails out, makes the catch, puts it on the deck, and Justin Edwards fouled him. Number three on Edwards, who's had some good moments for the Cats in this one. Reeves on the bench with three. At the moment, at least, Edwards stays in the game. And another foul. This one is going on Fierro. Jalen Williams was inbounding the ball and just went right to the low block and locked down a defender and got an angle. Auburn has to keep not only getting the ball inside, but keep getting a piece of the paint and playing out of it. It's been rare that they've been able to put Kentucky in rotation. And now Wagner returns and Edwards indeed will sit with his third. Boy, Kentucky dominating the paint. They are getting into the paint. I don't want to say it will, but way more often than Auburn is. Jones from the baseline. Too strong. And it's Kentucky ball. The arrow driving. What a rebound by Broom. Brought it down with one hand. Here comes Auburn. Baker Mazzara, and a foul, and he will go to the free throw line. Boy, why would you foul there? You force an incredibly tough two, and it's only two. Just put pressure on it. You cannot foul in that situation. You're bailing out a difficult shot. And it's an important guy who just picked up his third, Rob Dillingham. So very quickly, three different Wildcats have each picked up their third foul. And now John Calipari's putting Edwards back in, and looks like he'll take Dillingham out. And the question is, with these fouls, does that take away any of the defensive aggressiveness of Kentucky? And Auburn has to take advantage of it and start driving the ball and put them in a position to foul. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Sonic Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Just $1.99 for a limited time only at Sonic. Will you stop doing that? You're making me <laughs> hungry, man. <laughs> Made a boat. tries to make something happen and he draws a foul Boy, that was a nice job up until the end of Chad Baker Mazzara forcing DJ Wagner to his right hand even though he's right-handed he's much better going to his left so up top they're gonna try to force him to his right and you just can't foul him Janai Broom is back there to bother the shot or block it and you can't foul and take away your shot blockers effectiveness that way Wagner's still kind of working his way back from an ankle injury missed a few games played 13 and 18 minutes of the last two games uh, Upon returning and John Calipari talked about something that he doesn't think people take into account as much when a guy misses two weeks Three weeks. Yeah, they come back But there it takes a little while longer for their conditioning to get back to the peak level It was at before whatever the injury was well Kentucky's had no continuity this season What if they had one game with every player available? And that was, I think, against Ole Miss. Yeah, that was the last game, and then Mitchell didn't finish the game. Another Kentucky foul on Yenso. Number two on him. That well, was clean up top. What, what's wrong with that? That's just a heck of a block. From a guy who is clearly a heck of a shot blocker. We talked about the 10 at Rupp Tuesday against Ole Miss. Second most ever in Kentucky history. Nerland's Noel had a dozen. There were a couple, though, at least one, maybe two, that I thought that he had deflected lob passes. Ah. And they gave him blocks. Ah. Now, if it right. so it was not if it was nine blocks, so what? The guy was amazing. <laughs> But there was a point in the game when he had seven, and I was going, "Wait a minute! What, those, those were a couple. Of those were lob passes, but he was he was outstanding and game changing." They held Ole Miss to 63 on Tuesday. Auburn's only got 34 right now. Good defense by Jones. Good cut by Edwards, but it's knocked away. Tight window. Johnson up and in. And that's what Auburn wants to do. Force a turnover and turn defense into offense. Now this crowd is into it. First points off turnovers for Auburn tonight. And their first field goal here in the second half. And now they're pressuring the ball. Shepard, tough one. Bouncing around and Shepard's got it again. Wow, bodies are flying. Wow, and Fierro flushes it. A broken play and a do Fierro. And I think John Coach Calipari just got a warning for being out of the coach's box. Aggressive. Well, they have taken it up a notch, and Coach Cal wants them to take it up another notch to try to get this one over the finish line. They're up by 11, but there's a ton of time left in this game. And the full court pressure isn't necessarily to cause a turnover. It's just to lift the energy of this team and get them in that aggressive mindset. Boy, Chad Baker Mazzara with a tough baseline floater. He's got 11 in this game. And aside from those behind-the-back passes, he's had some really good moments. Shepard going for the, the long bomb, the touchdown pass, and it's off the leg of Fierro back to the Tigers. Yeah, Fierro hung on the rim after it was knocked away from him, and it looked like his foot flying knocked it out. 
How about that? Hit him in the leg, then hit him in the foot. But wear smaller shoes. <laughs> How about that pass by Reed Shepard? Yeah. Katie Johnson. And Wagner with a rebound. Ball screen to free up Wagner. Stolen away by Johnson. Oh, and somehow he managed to get that in. Kind of caught between a dunk and a land, but it all worked out in the end. And listen to this noise. Right, this is a big possession for Kentucky. Look at the defense by Johnson. And look how far Kentucky's been pushed out on the floor to run their offense. Offensive foul, Justin Edwards. Number four. It was the pressure that forced Kentucky into playing one-on-one -on -one instead of five-on-five. -five. Lowered that shoulder right, right into Chad Baker-Mazzara, who had legal guarding position. And now Auburn, if they get a score here, can really put some game pressure on Kentucky, which has been con in control from the opening tap. Kentucky only turned it over four times in the first half, five already in the second half. Johnson sees a lane, blocked, but the follow good for Broom. Anytime Onyenso comes to block a shot, that leaves the offensive glass wide open without a good rotation. Reeves, runner, short, got it back, blocked. Auburn ball. Cheney Johnson. Boy, that would have torn the roof off this building. Timeout, Kentucky. Three years of stats, right? Kind of ridiculous. Let's see how Kentucky responds. A good defense by KD Johnson on Dillingham to take away that shot. Shot clock at five. Reeves scoops it up and in. Well, Antonio Reeves has one of the best floaters in college basketball. That time he got all the way to the rim. And Kentucky handling the Auburn pressure much better after that timeout where John Calipari could get them refocused. Holloway burst to speed and he lays it into the other end. Boy, with that speed, tough to allow a straight line drive because you can't get your shot blocking help there. And Kentucky is an outstanding shot blocking team. The trap on Dillingham. He gets rid of it and gets it back. Auburn ball. Oh, the presence of Dylan Cardwell caused that turnover by the basket. And what a flip of the script in the second half. Kentucky turning it over. Auburn taking much better care of it. This is a great basketball game and a great scene. But there's important other work going on here tonight. And a tip of the cap to both the Sly Foundation and Bruce Pearl and Elder. And the Bruce Pearl Foundation done great work in the fight against cancer. Kentucky switching those exchanges. And boy. Jalen Williams had that ball go into the basket. Kentucky knocked it away. Reeves scoops it up and in. Not an up and under, but he reversed it up and in on the feed from Dillingham to make it a seven-point game. Another turnover, though only the second of the second half for Auburn. But how quickly does Kentucky turn defense into offense? They get the ball down court so quickly when you make a mistake. Holloway thinking about it. Drives it. What a pass. Oh, Jalen Williams couldn't finish it, and he's down injured and grabbing his right knee. And Joe Lindsay has... They don't have a single starter in the game right now, and Bruce Pearl often will go to this second unit on mass.
and this is where he feels his team can generally be better than the other team. But the other team gets worn down, but Kentucky hasn't been getting worn down. Kentucky going to a floppy set where Antonio Reeves can work off screens. Once he gets underneath the basket, he chooses which way to go, and you have to give him a direction. Johnson the foul on Fierro. And it'll be two shots coming for Adu Fierro. A good strong take by Adu Fierro. He's an above the rim finisher. And he's so strong when he puts it on the deck, he can cover ground. Double header for you on a Monday night. It starts with the ACC, a rivalry game. Virginia and Virginia Tech from Blacksburg and then Kansas State, Texas at 9 Eastern, a Monday night on ESPN. And the app, the arrow makes them both. He's got 10 points, 7 rebounds now. And again, remember, he is he started tonight because Trey Mitchell unable to go because of that shoulder injury. Little flex look right now, a cut across the bottom, and then a screen for the screener. Hardwell fouled. That's a staple of Bruce Pearl's career, that flex action. He coached for years under Dr. Tom Davis, first at Stanford. Knew him when he was a student at Boston College. And just off that down screen, the little slip to the basket by Dylan Cardwell and he's he's usually an above the rim finisher but got fouled there. Cardwell a 68% free throw shooter again. What a combination he and Chennai Broom have been this year. They combine for 39 minutes a game and they've averaged 21 points, 12 rebounds and four blocks per game this year. Cardwell's fourth in the league in blocks and he only plays 15 minutes a game. But he missed two big free throws. Kentucky still wants to be aggressive. A little too aggressive. Rob Dillingham, number four. Boy, there's still 9.46 to go in regulation. Dillingham just trying to run right. He's trying to set a screen, and then he just runs right through Chad Baker Mazzara. But there's good depth for Kentucky as well. Yes, Dillingham is out, but they've still got Shepard, Reeves, and Wagner in there on the perimeter. A.D. Johnson got it to go. Boy, he's had a couple of big buckets here in the second half. Cheney Johnson just rolled to one, or D.J. Wagner down into the post and was able to hold him off. That opened up that lane to drive. Reeves inside and a driving layup and a foul. Boy, that floppy action so difficult to guard. You're trailing Antonio Reeves and he just curled right around it. And Janai Broom got his hands into him before we, he went up to block that shot. Now watch him curling around this and hands were all over him. And just a terrific finish. That was a strong take by Reeves. That's the physical play on offense that John Calipari wants to see from his team. Very good free throw shooter. Missed it, so it's a nine-point lead. And every time Auburn's gotten to within a couple of possessions, Kentucky's had an answer. Holloway using the screen. And he just can't buy one from beyond the arc. And he is frustrated, visibly frustrated. After that one didn't go down. Well, SEC play has been a huge difference. He just isn't shooting the ball well at all. I think we mentioned 26 percent overall from the field in SEC games for Aiden Holloway. Remember Trey Donaldson's got four fouls so he's been on the bench it was about the 18 minute mark wasn't it when he picked up two fouls quickly in the second half so Holloway's in there for a long stretch. Donaldson the better defender Holloway the better scorer Reeves gets rid of it in a hurry and buries it. That's just too much time Chad Baker Mazzara got held up on a screen and Antonio Reeves sets his feet so quickly and got behind the three-point line. That's money Reeves double figures in 24 of 25 games this year the one he wasn't he had nine against North Carolina 
Davey Johnson, nice kick. Broom from the corner. Johnson the rebound. Wide open. And can't hit that baseline jumper. Those are tough shots right around the short corner. But Kentucky was really physical in that flex action on cutters. Especially Justin Edwards. He disrupted it with his physicality. Reeves again. Edwards, the weak side rebound. Long shot, long rebound. They're sticking with this floppy action. If Auburn's going to switch this, the big guys are going to be open. Wagner slipped, and a foul called on the Tigers. Or Kentucky leading this kind of a game here at Auburn. Yeah, to win this kind of yeah. gritty battle, Kentucky has been so physical and so strong together. And this is the best they've played defensively. I mean, at first I, I thought I'd say, okay, the Arkansas game was the best they played defensively. Then they really ratcheted things up. I thought played very well defensively against Ole Miss. But coming into this environment and punching first and over and over again, I mean, this has been really impressive, especially without Trey Mitchell in the lineup with that shoulder injury. This has been really impressive by Kentucky. Auburn got it down to five. Kentucky going on a big run. Janai Broom with a desperately needed bucket for the Tigers, but it's still a dozen. Well, he gets that shot off so quickly, turning over that right shoulder. He got it off so fast, Onyenso couldn't get up to block it. Ten to shoot. Reeves knocks down another one. He can't miss right now. That floater, what, he's got 20 now? Yep. That floater is such a weapon when you combine it with his ability to shoot from the perimeter. He puts up a little shot fake. You get a little bit off balance. He's gone. He could stop short and make that. Boy, Broom had more space than he realized. Onienzo hadn't gotten over to him. Didn't take advantage of it and then turned it over. Shepard goes down to double in the post. Broom with one hand tries to throw it out. And Shepard just took it away from him. And he's just got a, an amazing sense for the ball. Reeves driving on Chaney Johnson. Can't get this one to go. But got it back and lays it in. But Broom and Onyenso going for that ball. Almost to the point that it was a jump ball. But when it hit the deck... Antonio Reeves right there. Again, Auburn undefeated at home this year. 13-0. and But that is in tremendous jeopardy right now. Well, Auburn seems like they're in a little bit in panic mode on the offensive end now. Some of the shots that they've taken throughout the game have been questionable. I think that's helped fuel Kentucky. But give Kentucky's defense credit. This has been an excellent defensive effort by the Wildcats. And we got a foul call. I think they got Justin Edwards, and if they do, he is done for the night. Well, Edwards picked up the foul, but from the Kentucky perspective, he was aggressive. Eighteen minutes for Edwards, four points. Auburn will be at the line. Watch Edwards one. underneath going against Chaney Johnson. That's just rebounding. How's that a foul? Especially in this game with all with all the physicality that's been allowed. Let's go to Jess Sims. Hey guys, quick update. Jalen Williams is still in the training room and is officially confirmed out for the remainder of the game with a knee injury. Just thank you. So, and that's what it looked like. Came down awkwardly on that knee. And again, no, you know, no way to know the severity. Just hoping it's something minor. Donaldson. And Auburn is now three for 20 from three-point range tonight. Just can't get anything going. I think the lack of offense has taken a little bit of steam out of the Auburn defense. Five to shoot. It's Reeves again. 
behind the back, puts the brakes on, rebound Broom. Baker Mazzaro will shoot three. Well, he's saying he kicked his leg. Reach oh, really? He kicked his leg out, but you still don't want to foul there. I mean, that was a really difficult shot, if not a questionable one. Yeah, he did kick he that did leg, kick out. His leg out. Yep. But Shepard gets called for the foul. John Calipari wants them to go to the monitor to look at that. So the call goes against Shepard. Baker Mazzara makes the first, but Auburn's still got a long way to go in less than five minutes to get there. Baker Mazzara follows his free throw into the lane more than anybody in the country, I think. He's yeah. two steps in there, wishing it in. Well, he has to stay behind the line yeah. until it hits. Yeah. On this one, he'll have to. Made all three. Now Kentucky can take its time here. There's no reason to be in a hurry. And they milk it down to ten. The arrow blocked by Broom. Numbers. Johnson. Wow. Couldn't finish it. No call, and it's Kentucky ball. There's a lot of contact there. And Johnson, whose facial expression, it never hides anything. He was really frustrated they didn't get a call. And again down to 10. Under four minutes to go now. Reeves the floater again. Auburn ball. There's still some time here, but Auburn has to be efficient and get a score. Can't keep coming away with empty possessions. Jones for three. Got it. And it's a 10-point game. I think Auburn's got a trap off of any sort of ball screen action. There it is. They try to walk. trap Reeves. I mean, he, he switched pivot feet twice. And together on the defensive end. It's been really impressive. So let me ask you this. It's not the only factor, obviously, but Ugana Adienso getting a bigger role, anchoring that defense. How big of a factor is that in their overall defensive improvement? Well, it gives you confidence as a defender that you can take some chances, get out on the floor and guard, because if your man gets by you, you funnel him right into Ugana Onyenso, who's a big-time shot blocker. Jess Sims was right alongside the Kentucky huddle. Yeah, guys, in the Kentucky huddle, Cal said at this point with the score, don't help out on plays like the last one where Jones just got the three. We want them to take tough twos. We don't want them to get any three-pointers. Absolutely. Make them work hard for twos. Less than three minutes to go. Down to single digits. That's a situation what Jess Sims is talking about. You want to show help, but not give it. And make sure you're staying with the top perimeter threats. But that, that floppy action that Kentucky's been running for Antonio Reeves has been really effective because Auburn hasn't been giving him a direction. And right now, getting the ball in cleanly is job number one for Kentucky. Dillingham back in with four fouls. And don't look now, but kind of a sneaky, quick 8-0 run that Auburn is on to get it down to eight. There goes Reeves down under the basket. So he gets to choose which screen he wants to come off of. 
Instead, it's a beautiful find to Fierro. Well, we talked about it earlier. You give help on Antonio Reeves coming off those screens, and the big guys are going to be open. And that was just a beautiful read to get it to Adu Fierro wide open. Jones switches hands and draws the foul. Yelling about it. You can feel the air coming out of the building with every missed opportunity for Auburn. But Kentucky's made this a quiet building. It's hard to do. It is hard to do. <laughs> and you got to give these young cats a lot of credit for that. They've come on the road and they've been the aggressor from the opening tap. 57% of Kentucky's minutes this year have been played by freshmen. Like the guy with the ball that Reed Shepard. Rob Dillingham. And to have Reeves and Shepard and Dillingham, really good free throw shooters, that's comforting down the stretch when you're trying to protect the lead. And they've done a great job, too, using the clock on these possessions. A foul called on Janai Broom. And Auburn's getting frustrated. Janai Broom trying to give the what for the official after that. He felt that Dillingham was falling down. They need a score and they need it quick. They got to get something going quicker than this. Jones and he'll draw the foul on Fierro to get himself to the free throw line. Yeah, I know the feeling of urgency, but the important thing is to get the score. There's still plenty of time to force turnovers and get back into this. And even if you have to play the foul game down the stretch. Jones three threes and a couple of free throws for his 11 points tonight. Broom and a Baker Mazar with the high scores for the Tigers with 14 apiece. Now a dozen for Jones to get it down to seven. Well, good job by Fierro to get it out of that corner trap right away to Reed Shepard. Janai Broom on Antonio Reeves. Got to let Reeves just take it. Dillingham off to Fierro, who was fouled. And they went to foul him, and Fierro was still able to get the ball up off the backboard. That's strength. And again, using 24 seconds. They've done that time and time again over the past few minutes. They haven't rushed things. They've made good decisions with the ball. Tuesday night got a college basketball and SEC game for you on the SEC network. It'll be Dalton Connect and Tennessee hosting Missouri. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern. Now John Calipari has said, and the first time I heard him say it was around the old Miss game, that this Kentucky team is built for March. And he knows their offense is national champed it up. I mean, Kentucky was not a good defensive team, but this is a different team the last week than we've seen the first 20 games of the season. Johnson nearly took it away from Wagner as we enter the final minute of regulation. Yeah, Kentucky's just salting this away. There's not enough time. They've done a great job down the stretch here handling the ball. Shepard. They didn't score, but they used 29 seconds. Exactly. And a turnover. And Shepard knows they don't need a basket. They're just going to move the ball, hold it. 
And this one is academic right now. Boy, the energy in this place at the beginning of the game coming off the huge win Tuesday over South Carolina. No Trey Mitchell for Kentucky. But give Onyenso and the freshmen and everybody who's suited up in blue tonight a heck of a lot of credit. Kentucky earned this one. Well, we said that they had to come ready for a fight. And Kentucky came ready for a fist fight and took advantage of it. Auburn, you saw there, just 31% from the floor in this game. And that'll do it. An impressive road victory for Kentucky, the first home loss this season.